Hello, my name is Jacqueline Henshaw, and this presentation is going to be on the relationship between sugar, addiction, and psychosis. In this presentation, we will cover an introduction to some key ideas, discuss the addictive properties of sugar, discuss the role of diet and addiction in schizophrenia, as well as dopamine and its role in psychosis, and then we will close off with some conclusions. So what is sugar? Sugar is a simple disaccharide composed of two sugars, glucose and fructose molecules, and is harvested worldwide from the plants sugar beets and sugar cane. Today, the sugar industry has grown to produce some 166.18 million metric tons of sugar annually. Nearly 80% of all sugar production comes from the sugarcane farms of tropical and subtropical regions, with Brazil and India being among the top producers and exporters. But why is sugar bad for our health? Modern medicine has directly linked sugar to cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, as well as neurological diseases. More recently, science has determined that sugar is highly pleasurable and due to its pleasure is considered rewarding. Rewarding experiences trigger dopamine release in the brain. So what is the role of dopamine in addiction? Eating itself is a highly reinforcing activity, but foods that are considered pleasurable are more highly reinforced as a result of increased output of the neurotransmitter dopamine. Whenever an individual experiences something that is pleasurable, dopamine is released in the reward center of the brain, the nucleus accumbens, and the behavior is reinforced. The more pleasurable the experience, the more dopamine is released and the more strongly reinforced is the behavior. In research experiments, sucrose consumption has also reliably induced signs of addictions in rodents with demonstrated anxiety and somatic symptoms like withdrawal following abstinence. For individuals who continually seek to satisfy this dopamine reward system, the brain begins to create an increase of dopamine receptors to receive the dopamine, which further strengthens the reward for the addictive behavior. According to one study, Anatomical changes found following a PET scan of those who suffer from drug addiction show evidence of adaptation with an increased concentration of dopamine receptors compared to controls. Such changes in the Cubans also occur in obese individuals. This dopamine reward in the brain is referred to as the dopaminergic system and it is this system that is negatively implicated in the neurology of schizophrenics. Schizophrenics both release higher quantities of dopamine than their healthy peers and genetically have more DRD2 dopamine receptors, resulting in the predisposition for stronger addictive behaviors. But what is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder that is characterized by delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, catatonia, and negative symptoms like the lack of emotional expression. So let's talk a little bit more about the role of dopamine and addiction before going forward. Like drugs, sugar spikes the dopamine release in the nucleus the nucleus accumbens, and repeated access to sugar over time leads to prolonged dopamine signaling and greater excitation of the brain's reward pathways and a need for even more sugar to activate all the midbrain dopamine receptors like before. So we can see how this would be problematic for individuals with schizophrenia. It is likely the consequence of these differences in the schizophrenic's dopaminergic system that causes them to experience statistically higher rates of addictive behavior and poor diets. According to one study, epidemiologic studies in the general population and those based on the clinical assessment of schizophrenic populations have revealed a high degree of overlap between schizophrenia and addictive disorders. 
the abuse of psychoactive substances, including alcohol, throughout their lives is so frequent, up to 50%, that the possibility of a specific link inevitably arises. Likewise, in one summary, the prevalence of smoking was between 80 and 90% in people treated in hospital with schizophrenia. Numerous epidemiological studies describe the co-occurrence of schizophrenia and other forms of addiction such as to alcohol, methamphetamines, and opiates. And more specifically, polymorphisms of the dopamine D2 receptor gene has been linked with habitual use of alcohol, cocaine, nicotine, obesity, and eating behavior. With regards to diet, schizophrenics are statistically more likely to have poor dietary habits and consume the type of diet that is known to promote diseases of the metabolic syndrome. Furthermore, there is emerging evidence of an association between dietary factors and the severity and long-term outcome of schizophrenia. These dietary factors are often the result of high fat and high sugar choices, which stimulate the same dopaminergic pathways as illicit drugs. This system, if compromised, can lead to food addiction and obesity. And yet, these are not even the most impactful of the consequences of the heightened dopaminergic system for schizophrenics. While up to this point there has only been discussed the link between dopamine and addiction, there exists evidence that links dopamine release in the midbrain to the pathophysiology of psychosis, addiction, and reward. Psychosis is one of the characteristic features of schizophrenia and is described as a condition that features a range of behavioral alterations that relate to the loss of contact with reality and a loss of insight. While the relationships between the brain regions and the neural pathways involved in psychosis are still an area of active study, it has become evident that there is a clear relationship between the stimulation of dopamine release and the onset of psychosis and schizophrenia. Several connections between dopamine and psychosis are described. First, amphetamine-induced dopamine release is exaggerated in people with schizophrenia. And second, after amphetamine administration, dopamine release is associated with psychotic symptoms. This next part is a bit of an aside, but I found it rather interesting. Uh, one consequence of the release of dopamine following a stimulus is that in addition to the experience being rewarded, the brain is inclined to direct additional focus to the object of reward in a manner that's habit forming, similar to the way that it can become addicted to the dopamine release. It can become somewhat habitually addicted to uh, the, uh, the object of focus. Following the onset of psychosis, that object may or may not be an object of actual reward, but could be a facet of delusion. In fact, a stimulus, even if initially lacking inherent salience, which is the quality of being noticeable or important, once paired with dopaminergic activity, maintains the ability to evoke dopaminergic activity over time. This suggests that in psychosis, once an environmental stimulus has been highlighted by aberrant dopamine signaling, it may man maintain its ability to trigger dopaminergic activity, potentially cementing its position in a delusional framework even if the system su subsequently returns to normal function. Uh, therefore, it has been the working theory of psychiatry for some time that in people with schizophrenia, dopamine release leads to aberrant um, salience or focusing on innocuous stimuli. Um, symptoms of hallucinations and psychosis emerge, resulting from a patient's attempt to explain the increased in attention that they give to these stimuli. Um, and as such, um, I believe there is a strong foundation to the argument that behaviors and activities stimulating to the dopaminergic system ought to be avoided for individuals with schizophrenia. 
um, such dopamine stimulating behaviors uh, would include not just um, illicit street drugs, but a diet of addictive rewarding foods like sugars that could be stimulating to dopamine release. Uh, low sugar, low carb diets should be prioritized as a part of treatment plans for schizophrenics in conjunction with uh, pharmaceutical therapies. And uh, it is also worth noting in closing, um, schizophrenia aside, that for healthy individuals, the concerns regarding sugar consumption and, and dopamine remain just as relevant to health. Sugar remains an addictive substance with the potential to create uh, addiction and cause innumerable diseases of your body and mind. And this concludes the presentation. And thank you so much for watching.